Well, another Valley rivalry game on tap for you tonight as Logan visits Mountain Crest. Boy, the Mustangs are running a gauntlet here the last three weeks at Skyview. East here at home, and they took a drubbing in both of those games. And now Logan here at home. It doesn't get any easier for the Mustangs, but they're still in fourth place in the region. The playoffs started today. They'd be in. Yeah, they would be in, but you're right. The gauntlet is this region. It's a tough region. They still got to play Box Elder. It's a, uh, this is a tough night tonight for, for Mountain Crest. Well, let's talk a little bit about the Logan Grizzlies. They're putting up points like crazy, and, and the young Mr. Nelson seems to be doing it all himself. But, of course, he has a whole lot of help. What what is what is the key for Mountain Crest to maybe have a chance at an upset tonight against that great Logan team? Well, the the passing game always starts with the run game, and that's what uh, Nelson is really good at is running. And you'll hear Coach uh, Wooten talk about that in his interview. All right, game of the week on the Valley Channel is coming up next. the new Proform TDF Centennial. The only training bike that inclines and declines, rides anywhere in the world, and measures your energy output. With Google Street View and a 7-inch touchscreen, draw your map and ride every tour stage, or anywhere in the world. The TDF responds to terrain changes with a full 20% incline, 20% decline. An integrated advanced power meter measures your exact watts. And silent magnetic resistance means the training bike making all the noise in the cycling world sounds like this. You can't train like this on any other bike. Call or go online today to get the Proform TDF Centennial with zero down plus free upgrade to rush shipping. Logan visits Mountain Crest on the Game of the Week on the Valley Channel. The Game of the Week is brought to you by Icon Health and Fitness. Changing lives with fitness innovation. Cache Valley Hospital, your choice in healthcare. Salt Lake Express, door to door service to and from the Salt Lake Airport every hour. Lewiston State Bank, strong and vibrant for over a century. Immaculate Homes, now your home. Wendy's of Cache Valley, it's way better than fast food, it's Wendy's. Discount Tire and Automotive, so much more than a tire store. Four Seasons Premier Apartment Homes. Live, work, play, and celebrate. PR Graphics for all your promotional graphics needs. Alpine Cleaning and Restoration Specialists. We respond, we restore, you relax. The Logo Shop. We logo stuff. All kinds of stuff. And the Valley Channel. Cash Valley's television station. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the Game of the Week on the Valley Channel. Tonight we are in Hiram at Lynn R. Miller Field, Mountain Crest playing host to Logan. I'm Eric Olson along with Lee Vaughn and the Mountain Crest Mustangs and Logan Grizzlies, two teams going in opposite directions. Mountain Crest suffering through a rare down year. Injuries playing a large part in that. They're they were playing a lot of underclassmen due to, ne to necessity with Logan. You've got a team that just seems to get better every single week. One of the top scoring teams in the state at 41 and a half points per game. Well, that's what uh, that's what both of these coaches want out of each of their teams is to get better each week. And and you know it's, sometimes it's just bad luck when your uh, best players and seniors are injured. And that's what's happened to Mountain Crest, plagued with injuries this season. But Logan, you're right, just keeps plugging along. And and I think they think up some new wrinkle every week. And and uh, you know that's Coach Rivero and the way he likes to roll. Well, we talked with Coach Mark Wooten just a few minutes ago and a kind of windy, wet night here in Hiram. Let's hear what he had to say. Coach, a blustery night here at Mountain Crest, but Logan comes to town and great in-valley rivalry and storied rivalry at that. Coming to this game, needing to win bad in region. Tell me about it. Yeah, we do. And, you know, obviously Logan's playing very well. Um, thankfully, it's the last Nelson to play, uh, hopefully for a while. But, uh, you know, they're doing a great thing, and uh, it is a great rivalry game. And so you just hope that, you know, the energy of that will help our kids to compete hard and, and uh, you know, see what we can do against a great team. Talk about the two quarterbacks. You mentioned Nelson. He's great on that side. What did you tell your defense this week, and what are you doing with your quarterback to get ready to go against their defense? Uh, you know, you just have to try to slow him down. Um, you know, he... The thing that those Nelson kids do so well is they run well, and they, they run hard. Um, you know, we've got to try to limit his opportunities, and, and for us offensive, for our quarterback, we've got to, we've got to keep the ball. We turn the ball over too much. Um, 
and every time we turn it over, it usually ends up uh, costing us some points. And so uh, we need, really need to protect the ball and not turn it over. Okay, thanks, Coach. Good luck in the game. Thank you. See you at halftime. And we've got the national anthem going on here at Mountain Crest, so we will listen in deference to our country. Crowd filling in here in Hiram. Again, a cold, wet night. Been rainy all day. The rain has stopped for now, but it's pretty much typical October football in northern Utah. Well, that's a, it feels a little colder. It feels a little colder? <laughs> I think it's because I'm a little older. You're getting old. Yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly what it is, but it's great <laughs> football weather. And I always look forward to this fantastic Mountain Crest Logan matchup. And in spite of the records, still an in Valley rivalry. We love well, Logan's clinched at least a tie for a berth in the playoffs. They'll secure a spot by winning tonight in this ball game. Coach Mike Favero, though, I don't think he's uh, worried about that. Let's hear what he had to say to leave on. Coach, another in-valley rivalry game this week. Uh, you've taken care of Skyview in a, in, a, in a great effort on your team's part. Now Mountain Crest, another region game. Tell me about this game. Well, it should be fun. These games are always big games. These kids have grown up playing against each other. and. Um, I know that Mountain Crest senior class and ours have had some good battles over the years going back and forth, so we expect a tough game. Talk to me about uh, your offense. Nelson has a great game last week. You guys really shut down Skyview's high-powered offense. You're the D.C. Tell me about that. Well, we, we had a real good plan going in and, and uh, had a real good picture of what they were going to do and played hard. And Our deal is about winning the technique and executing the scheme and then playing with passion and synergy and energy and then and taking the results. This far into the season, tell me about the uh, health of your team. Good. Good, but Cade Watterson, unfortunately, two weeks ago uh, had a hand injury as a receiver and is out, but outside of him, everything else is good. All right, sounds good, Coach. Good luck today. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Well, Coach Favero knows that his team can't afford a letdown tonight. You really can't, whether Mountain Crest is playing full strength or having a good season or a bad season. Crazy things can happen, and it can <laughs> derail you in a hurry if you just don't stick to you. To what you do best. Well, you just don't. You just never know. You get a turnover here. The weather affects your offense on one side of the, one side of the ball. It, you never know in these rivalry games. So, and that's why we play them. If everything was done on paper, then uh, then Timphy would win every year. <laughs> Mike Favero, the the ninth winningest coach at his current school, uh, at 70 percent, 127 and 53, 15. Winning seasons just down the list a little bit is Mark Wooten at 76 and 39. Ten winning seasons here at Mountain Crest. And so that's their record at, at their current school. And Favero, this is the only school he's been the head coach at. So, all right, we'll get a look at both of these teams. As they're, the captains are having the coin toss at midfield. We'll be back right after this.
Park, Salt Lake Express, and the airport shuttle have merged and become one. So we still have doorstep service, and it's about the same price as it was before. Our focus now is to try to provide as many opportunities for people who, who need to have the ability to get to and from Salt Lake when they want. They don't want to wait at the airport for two hours. They also don't want to be driving around the valley when they get here. And you bring us to a location that leaves on time. We'll have another vehicle take you here to save time comfortably, and that main vehicle goes 12 times a day on schedule, both leaving the valley and coming back. Well, Mountain Crest won the toss and decided to defer until the second half. So Logan's offense will take the field first. And that's, that's trouble right there. <laughs> yeah, either way, they're going to get the ball at some point in time. <laughs> Eventually. Might, might as well get that over with right away. <laughs> One guy to watch tonight, Taylor Compton for the Logan Grizzlies. 174 receptions. That's good for fourth all-time in the state. 20 more gets him to third place. He's... 15th in receiving touchdowns with 25 and 17th in yards at 2037. So, you know, and you look at Taylor Compton, he doesn't really look like your prototypical no. football player. Maybe what, 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, he's probably listed yeah. at 5'10", and I don't think he's <laughs> that tall. And, no. But you know what? He's just a player. He's a gamer. Well, he's got a nose for the ball, and he knows how to get open, and uh, even though, and he's pretty fast. Uh, but he, you're right, he's not... He's not a huge guy by any means, but he's a, he's a great football player and indicative of, of what Coach Vero gets out of his kids at Logan. Always gets more out of them than what you think. Well, the Skyview Bobcats are playing host tonight to Fox Elder. Fox Elder. That should be an interesting ball game out there. My in. wife is torn. We live in Skyview Boundaries, and uh, she is a bee. Well, she is what she is. Your kids are bobcats. That's true. She's a bee. That's true. So she's torn. I also, said, Tam, your daughter is in uh, choir. Who cares? Also, she's graduated a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, she's just almost as old as me. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> Mostly, it doesn't really matter. Icon Health and Fitness, one of our game sponsors. They've are one of the world's largest developers and manufacturers and marketers of fitness equipment. They've got brands that include Nordic Track, Proform Weeder, Reebok, Gold's Gym, and Health Rider. And don't forget the Ultra Shoes. That is a Icon brand right there, Ultra. It's Icon Health and Fitness. And also Discount Tire and Automotive. There's so much more than a tire store. Belts, hoses, batteries, we do that. Alignments, brakes, shock, strut, suspension, air conditioning service, check engine light, preventative maintenance, full service oil change. Yeah, we do that at Discount Tire and Automotive. Mount Crest getting set to kick off. It's Chris Barr. Bars looking at McIntyre, and he kicks it over his head and into the end zone. So the Logan offense takes over at their own 20-yard line, led by Chase Nelson. And we talked to plenty of Mountain Crest folks here, coaches and everything. They said, you know what's the best part about Chase Nelson? <laughs> He's what's the last that? Nelson. He's the last Nelson. <laughs> That's exactly what Coach Wooten said in his interview. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't the only coach that said that. No. They all have a lot of respect for him, and they, they, you know, I think it's fun to watch and everything, but, boy, it's tough playing against these Nelson boys. Compton on the little end around, not much. Well, that fly sweep is a quick hitter from uh, Nelson to Compton, but Mountain Crest does a good job in closing off that end. Two yards. Cornerback Hall does a great job holding the spot, playing assignment football. Nelson. He's going to throw. He's looking down the middle of the field to Artist, and Artist can't get there. And Nelson starts with an incompletion. Nelson comes into this game 151 for 230. That's 66%. 2,189 yards, 29 touchdowns, and seven interceptions. So it's third down and eight. Artist with 28 receptions on the season. He catches just about everything, so that was a pretty tough ball. The harder it is to catch, the more likely it is he'll catch it. Nelson goes back to Artist. Artist has the first down. 
up at the 33-yard line. And so it's 11 yards and a first down on third down and nine. Boy, and that's one thing you don't want to do if you're Mountain Crest. You want to uh, try and get this offensive Logan off the field. You have a third and long and give up a 13-yard play. That's tough. There's nobody on the outside receiver. And finally, the Mountain Crest coaching staff points out to Sorrell Hall, hey, you're over here. He's a sophomore, is Hall. Nelson in the backfield, as we see so many times. Wow. The first tackler can't bring him down, and it looks like no tackler is going to bring him down. Goodbye. Oh, my gosh. Somebody caught him, but not until he's inside the 10-yard line of Mountain Crest. I think that's number uh, 32, Nick Watterson. Has a great angle and turns on the Jets. And let 60 me, yards. Let me tell you, Nelson is going to hear about that in film. Getting caught from behind. <laughs> <laughs> but he looked like he was wrapped up in the backfield. How many times have we seen that? He spun oh, off it, and off he goes. It, there was three really good opportunities for a tackle, at least by the line of scrimmage, and none of those came to fruition, and there's a 60-yard pickup for Nelson. Five wide receivers for Logan. The ball's down at the six-yard line. Sixty-one yards officially. The slant is incomplete, no flag. So it's second down. The pass intended for Caden Anderson. Watterson on the coverage for the Mustangs. So officially 61 yards on the run. And now it's second down and goal from the six. Compton and Artis to this side. Logan loves to use Rector in that short yarded situation. He was in the slot just a second ago and missed that pass. Now McIntyre comes to the backfield. Pitch to McIntyre. Has the block, has the end zone. Touchdown, Logan. Six yards out for McIntyre. That ends up being a seven yarder. They had that spotted at the seven. So the Grizzlies into the end zone early. The 61 yard run by Nelson. The key play on that drive with 10-19 to play in the first period. Seven nothing, Logan with the early lead. Lewiston State Bank, we offer lots of different loan products to meet your needs. We're happy to work with you and hope that you would enjoy working with us. We had to take out an automobile loan and so we came into Lewiston State Bank and she was so good. She worked with me really, really well. We are proud to have been serving our customers for over 100 years with personalized, friendly service. Please come in and meet your new friends at Lewiston State Bank. Now here's the key play on that possession. Nelson, looked like Nick Taylor had him for a loss and somehow he gets off it, gets out of a couple of tackles. And then right here it looks like he's going down. Just keeps his feet moving and uh, gets downfield in a hurry. Nice angle here by Watterson to bring him down. Almost didn't have that angle. Good speed. Well, they spotted him at about the seven. That was about the nine. He got a good spot Yeah. where his knee went down. So. I don't know if it was going to matter, but it's a good, good spot for Logan. He got two more yards. He needs 239 yards rushing to get to 1,000 yards rushing. And that one goes into the end zone, and it's a touchback. So well, he needs 239 coming into this one. Now he needs, what, 200? He needs less than that. More like, uh, more like um, 180. There you go, 180. Approximately. Take a look at the touchdown. They're on a little pitch play, the option. And look at this seal block right there. Untouched. Easy six for Logan. Looks like it was a block out there. Might have been Kincaid Wildman that made that block out on the edge. Looked like number six, but couldn't quite tell. So now Mountain Crest looking at a 7 nothing deficit. Elison with a handoff and a helmet laying on the field. And that helmet belongs to Jake Swanton. Big number 71, he's gonna have to sit Jim down Conner after that. Jason, 
<laughs> Somebody popped a cork there, and that helmet cut him shooting off. Mountain Crest doesn't pick up any yardage back to the original line of scrimmage, second and ten. That was Josh Jackard. Nobody in the backfield for Mountain Crest. Blitz is on. Elison runs out of trouble. Unloads, has a man. It's Luke Smith at the 45-yard line. And that's going to be a first down for Mountain Crest, a gain of 25. And now the official's coming over and saying, nope, he was out of bounds. One official was saying it's a catch. The other came in and said, no, he was out of bounds. Well, that sure looked like he was inbounds. Let's take a look. You only have to get one foot inbound in high school football, and we can't really see through the defender's legs there. Is there any way we can slow it down and look at that? Austin ends blocking our view. Austin is in the way. Doesn't. What? Yeah, he was. He was. It was close. He was picking up one, but the other one definitely came down out of bounds. It's did he have possession of the ball or not? Third down. Elison slings it out there too tall for his intended receiver, Zach Smith. Why not to drive killer that incomplete pass on the second down and brings up now fourth and ten. Gonna have to punt the ball away. Compton. Setting up shot back about his own 45-yard line. Logan's going to get fantastic field position out of this. Mountain Crest having to cobble together an offensive line. A lot of underclassmen, and Compton's going to ask for a fair catch right at about the 46-yard line. But we, we talked about in that Skyview game toward the end boy the Skyview defensive line was just in the backfield before the ball was mm -hmm. well by that time Mountain Crest was down to pretty much their JV line because of injuries yeah. and they still have a, a bunch of injuries so a lot of young kids getting thrust into the fire here early in well, Hiram. You know it doesn't bode well for this year's season but sure next year when they come back and have a lot of varsity game experience it's it's invaluable then. And it takes time to come together as a, an offensive unit. Nelson down the middle looking for Rector. Rector hauls it in at the 20. Wow, that was a great ball thrown in stride to Rector. At the 20 yard line. 35, 34 yards. No pressure on Nelson at all. Has a chance to stand back and line this one up and he puts it right on the numbers. And Rector doesn't have to break stride and that's a first down on the 20. Nelson looking to throw again. Has time underneath, but it's tipped away before it can get to Compton. Nelson, two of five for 45 yards. Looking for Compton. I think that was Taylor who knocked that ball down. Nick Taylor, number 19. Yeah. Second and 10. Mountcrest looking like they may be bringing somebody from the back seven and they are Nelson's gonna go right up the middle right up those a gaps he's down to the 10 nine yard line and he picks up 11 yards and a first down well that's one of the uh, one of the keys if you watch Logan's offensive line Chase Nelson changed the play there and they, they widened out their splits dramatically and you know that that's what sets up the run for Chase especially Mountain Crest is trying to defend it with three down linemen at 30 front and then Walking up the, walking up the linebackers into the interior gaps, offsides on Mountain Crest. So it'll be first and goal at the five. The first penalty of the game. 8:44 to play in the first period. It's seven nothing Logan, and they're looking to add to their advantage. Five wide receiver Nelson looks, blitz coming underneath. He's got his man. Touchdown Logan. It's Chad Artist. Hauling it in for six. Two untouched touchdowns for Logan. Untouched touchdowns. Untouched touchdowns. I know it's a strange phrase, but they are not even getting a glove on them. Let's everybody come and opens up the uh, space where the linebackers would be filling. Artis is there to punch it in for six. So hard to defend that pattern. It's a defensive back, especially if you're playing back. 14 to nothing as the PAT is good. Logan on top.
<laughs> uh, here's the touchdown. Again, you see the defensive back trying to catch up. They're playing off, and he's running that little slant underneath. It's tough to defend against anybody, let alone a speed merchant like Artist. That's a returnable ball out to about the 20 yard line. Colton Ferguson, Gage Ferguson's little brother. Gage Ferguson's done for the year. He's got an MCL tear. Big Kyle Christiansen, who's heading to the University of Utah, is done for the year. He, they just got him back and he got dinged up again in practice. And what, what we're hearing is that he's probably done for the year. There's a whole lot of kids in Letterman's jackets on that sideline for Mountain Crest, isn't there? Yep. Doing what they can to pump up the young guys. Elison hands it off inside. A little bit of, little bit of juice being thrown out there <laughs> after the play. Was that Jackard? Couldn't see the number on him. Or was it Smith? Nope, Smith the lead blocker. That's Taylor. Watch right at the end here. Hey, knock it off. Now Austin in number 10. Don't be pushing me in the back. Didn't like that. Three yard gain for Taylor on first down. You gotta remember these kids have grown up in the same valley and they've played each other for a very long time. This is a heated rivalry to say the very least. Elison tosses it out and it's caught right about the line of scrimmage by Nick Taylor. It's going to be a gain of about a yard. So it'll be third down for Mountain Crest at about six. You live out in those Skyview boundaries. I do. I, um, I know in the Mountain Crest boundaries, uh, you know, they're, they're really heated rivalry. It's a rivalry for both teams, but it's, it's Logan that's the really heated one for most teams. Mountain Crest folks. What about out at the north end? No, I think it's more Mountain Crest. Yeah? Yeah, I hear more about that. So the common denominator here is Mountain Crest. <laughs> That's because they've been so good for so many years. <laughs> here comes Blitz off the edge. Elison in trouble. Down he goes. And it was the Blitzer that made the play. Jaden Connor. With a three-yard loss, four-yard loss. And Elison, again, we talked about a lot of new guys on that offensive line. Younger guys learning to work together. And Jaden Connor's hard for anybody to block. Well, he just circumvents everybody and goes all the way around. Oh, that ball's almost blocked. Just about blocked, but not quite. Oof. Like Kincaid Wildman just about got a piece of that. It rolls back. Logan gets the ball. At the 30. At the 30. <laughs> okay, Matt, Dad. Oh, my. At the 30. The 30 yard line. Already leading 14 0 with 619 to play in the first period. Logan looking for more. Well, East, Chase, sorry, Chase Nelson will never get to 1,000 yards rushing with 30 yards of field to work with. Rector, the intended target. And he can't make the adjustment to get to this one. And he did everything he could. The pass intended to Hartman Rector. Well, a couple of weeks ago, Mountain Crest goes the out and they stage. play they played Skyview and you know that game tough out of Skyview gave up 49 points. Then they gave up 53 to East <laughs> here on this field. And now Logan today and then Box Elder next week. East probably the best team in the state. Yeah, talking to the Mountain Crest coaches, they said they they haven't seen all the teams, but they think it's going to be hard for anybody to beat them. Of course, Logan, I think, feels like they can play with anybody. Chase Nelson keeps the ball. And certainly, they're showing that right now. Nelson got a one-yard gain on first Jason down Jason. and nothing much else. Or excuse me, on second down and after Kate that completion. And now it's third down and nine. How they tighten up. In fact, they're almost foot to foot on their splits down there, which seems to me like they're probably gonna throw this football. 
And that's what they're doing. Nelson brings it down. He's got running room to the outside. Slips a tackle, but he's tackled short of the first down marker by Mason Kendrick. At the 21, I think. And Jaden Thompson out there as well. It's a seven yard gain. They're gonna go for it. This is definitely four down territory for Logan. 80 yards on four carries for Nelson. I think he's short. He may be, let's see. He needed to get the 20, well he needed to get just shy of the 20. Oh, I think, yeah. They're spotting him just shy of the 20. The side judge was walking a little Nelson's south as he was marking that ball. First down. Five wide receivers on first and 10 from the 20 with five minutes to play in the first period. Nelson hit as he throws this one a little short. It's still caught. It went right through the hands. I don't know how. Of Jordan Wengreen and into the hands of Taylor Compton for a 20 yard touchdown. I don't know how Compton got that ball. I mean, look at this. He doesn't get his arm all the way into it, so it hangs. Wen Green comes over right through his hands and into the hands of the waiting Compton. Luke Smith is there as well, and it's 21-0. Logan extends their lead. Mountain Crest, even when you do everything right, it goes wrong. Sometimes a game's like that, sometimes the whole season's like that. Look at, you just can't do much more other than no. close your hands and around the ball. Pressure in the quarterback's face, two man coverage, and still six points for Logan. Now that ball goes out of bounds at the eight yard line didn't they throw the flag on that or did somebody touch it before it went out because if it went out of bounds on its own on the kickoff on the eight yard line it should be up yeah, at about the somebody, 35. Somebody, somebody touched must have it. touched it from mountain crest hard to see way up here in the press box but we're watching the we're watching replays it must have hit one of those up guys because i didn't see anybody try to field it Wow, so for Mountain Crest, they're back at their own eight yard line. They run the pitch and in the backfield for Logan. Loss like, of three. Was it Cade Patterson that was back there? Let's see. Might have been. It looked like 14. Patterson, the safety, came up and made that play. So second down and 12. Zach Smith goes in motion. And now Mountain Crest wants a timeout, 4.05 to play. In the first period, Mountain Crest trails 21-0, everything going Logan's way. And things just not getting any better for the Mustangs. <laughs> You know what makes everybody feel better? What? Pier 49 pizza. Oh my goodness. It's early in the game. You can still get some. You're going to watch the rest of the game. It's good. You know, the, the best employee here at the uh, Valley Channel, the most valuable, is Gary Neuenschwander. Pizza. Technical director slash pizza coordinator. Pizza. Delicious. 
he always brings three or four pizzas with him and see he's got smart where he's doing half pizza this half pizza oh, that so it's like having six that's that, that what's that new one the treasure island with the with yeah. the one we had last week it had cashews on it and it was good <laughs> cashews good an arctic choke pizza hearts. good can't be bad no it wasn't bad at all it was a garlic based sauce i'm telling you It'll keep the ladies away while you're watching the game, too, with all that garlic. Elison <laughs> looks underneath. Is that, is that uh, Luke Smith? It looks Luke like Smith is who his favorite is. receiver. Seven yards. Elison's pass to Luke Smith. And third and short. Looks like Luke Smith, number six. It surely is. A third down for the Mustangs and four. They're 0 for 2 on third downs. E and and third and 4 is a very e manageable contact. third down. E Gives you a lot of options still. You know, they need to pick up a couple. Even if they don't score, they need to flip field position. Yeah. Make things a little more uncomfortable for the Logan offense. Patterson looks like he's coming on the safety. Blitz, the ball's free. Picked up by Logan. Wow. Picked up and run in for a touchdown by Caden Anderson. Did that come out of Elison's hands as he's trying to pitch it? Yeah, it looked like a looked like a fake pitch, but it slipped. Let's see if we can see that in the replay. Right there. Oh, right in the exchange, and he knocks it into the backside of one of the Logan defenders. They faked the pitch and then turned around yeah. for the inside handoff, and Logan was in the backfield. So the PAT is up and good. And the defense has scored now for the Grizzlies. 28 to nothing. Logan. The optical industry is changing an awful lot right at the moment. A lot of new advances in lenses. Uh, and styles of frames. Right at the moment, the most popular thing are big, black, chunky looking frames. Um, for, for both guys and gals, we help someone uh, look better, uh, not only from this side, but from the, from the outside in. Well, it rains and it pours. Fake the pitch, the inside give, wasn't going anywhere anyway. And it wasn't a clean handoff. Caden Anderson picks it up clean. He's in the end zone for the touchdown. 14 yards, that's a 28-0 lead. You know, Mountain Crest hoping they could take care of the ball a little bit, shorten the game a little bit, but the only way they're shortening it now is running clock in the second half, the way things are going. Luke Smith out to the 20. And believe it or not, that's about the best field position for Mountain Crest all night. Well, Logan's defense was feeling bad about the offense having all the scoring, so uh -huh. had to get in the end zone. <laughs> Don't think Coach Rivero didn't mention that to his team. Since he's the calling the defense. <laughs> Rain starting up again here in Hiram. Elison looks for the out pattern, has his man, and out near the first down marker is Nick Taylor. He looks like he picked up oh, about eight. No, they're going to mark it clear back at the... 26, so it's closer to six yards. They originally had run out to about the 28 yard line. Under three minutes to play here. We're still in the first period. Logan scored 28 points already, including a defensive touchdown. Hit in the backfield and looking to lurch forward is Lavani Damuni. De Mooney is a, a name that, that most people would recognize if they were Aggie fans. His, his dad, Wonga De Mooney, played, I believe played tight end 
for Utah State years and years ago, and now he's back uh, on the staff up there at Utah State. I know him a little bit from when I was up there. He's a good guy. Third down for Mountain Crest. Elison. They're throwing back the other way to DeMooney, and he can't come up with a catch. They just can't find it with the defender in the face of Elison. Luke Smith, and I don't know if it was a decoy play or what, is standing at the other. At the, you can't see him. He's at the other end of the screen. That's where Elison looks, and then he looks back. So I think he did it on purpose. Smith's waving his hands like, look, I'm open. But Logan didn't fall for it, and I think one of the Logan defenders may have gotten a hand on that ball. Uh-oh. High snap on a wet night, and they get the punt away. And where that ball was free like that, just because they ran into the kicker, doesn't mean anything. Where the ball is rolling around and free like that, the kicker becomes fair game. Yep, he can become a, becomes a runner. That's Josh Jackard back there. Uh, usually running for his life, but still a runner. <laughs> he did a good job to get this one off. Oh, no kidding. You see the rain coming down harder. He got that one off, but it didn't go very far. It went less than 10 yards before it went flying out of bounds. So Logan starts at the 34-yard line of Mountain Crest. Nelson, a lot of time. Now he looks underneath, and it's incomplete. Looked like McIntyre got hit a little bit early there, but you're not going to see that flag. I don't know how many flags we're going to see. There you go. The rain's starting to come down. I came through the canyon earlier tonight. No snow. Just, yeah. a, just a little bit of rain. There was snow last Thursday coming home. I guess we need it, though. I guess. <laughs> I don't want it, but we need it. We're not happy, are we? We're complaining that it was 100 degrees all summer. And now we complain that it's right. <laughs> well, we never really had fall. <laughs> <laughs> Nelson up the middle. Mountain Crest diving around like the ball might be loose. They spot that at the 30, well, the 29 yard line. So it's a five yard run by Nelson. And that's third down for the Grizzlies. They're one of two on third down, but one of one on fourth down. So basically they're converting. Again, tight splits. They're going to swing at the McIntyre out of the backfield. He's got the first down. He's inside the 20-yard line and down near the 15. A 14-yard gain on third and five. That's just a good play call. Totally fools the defense. There's nobody out there covering McIntyre out of the backfield. Logan just converting on third down. Nelson with four receivers to his right. A stack in the middle. They throw it up. If that's a catch, that's a great one, but it's not. Who Boy, was just that? about caught. That was Freeman, Freeman. senior wide receiver for Logan. He had one hand out. Looked like he might have hauled it in, but... Not quite. Chance to look at the replay right here. Yeah. Oh. oh, he almost brings that in. Same look as the last play. Freeman's on the inside. He's to, the, he's to that bottom of the screen. It's the inside receiver. Just left of those stack receivers in the slot here in that uh, in the middle there. Nelson looking over the middle. Pass broken up, and there's a pass interference penalty in the end zone. That'll be half the distance to the goal line and a first down. Chandler Lowry, the intended receiver, number eight. And you can see the contact come early here in the end zone. They call that back right hand pulling on their shoulder pads. The front hand was fine. Yep. That's the back hand. Yeah, and if he even if he rests it on him, he's probably all right. But he pulled on it, kind of pulled him around. Well, they go half the distance, and it's not first down because now it's not an automatic first down, that pass interference. It's just the yardage. So if they were out in the middle of the field, uh -oh. that one up for grabs, and no one can get there for either team. If they were out in the middle of the field, that would have been a first down. But as it was, it works in Mountain Crest's favor. And does Logan kick a field goal here or go for a touchdown? 
already leading 28-0 with 105 to play. Look at this. Look. Oh, the, the rivalry's a big deal. Well, it's third down. That's actually third down. They got second down again because of the penalty. Now they spread out those linemen. He's going to run it. There's Nelson. Got the first down. Yep. The first guy almost never brings Nelson down. It takes two or three good tackle efforts to bring him down. Man, if I'm a defender, he's just driving me absolutely insane. <laughs> he doesn't. He just doesn't know. go down. Under a minute to play. Not sure. Nelson coming out. Yeah, they've got Nelson out. That means Freeman. Did his helmet come off? Because he's messing around with his helmet. Is Freeman the quarterback? Yep. Yep. That's Freeman. He's going to follow McIntyre in for the touchdown. Three yards for Kyler Freeman. Kyler Freeman carries the ball into the end zone. And the first person to congratulate him out there is Nelson. Follows McIntyre in a big hole. And the Logan offense making it look easy. We are still in the first quarter, folks. It's 34 to nothing. Now 35 to nothing. Logan on top of Mount Chris. 40 seconds to play in the first period. How do you old Chris Mill? <laughs> old Chris Mill Bread Company, Ogden, Brigham, Logan. Well, the floodgates have opened here at Hiram, and not from the sky. Well, a little bit. It's from the sky, from the ground. Logan doing it all different ways. And that's Kyler Freeman. As Nelson had gone off. I don't know if his helmet had come off. He'd gone off messing around with his helmet. If his helmet came off during the running play before, he has to stay out for a play. And it didn't matter. Luke Smith looking for an opening, and there's not one. He's at the 15-yard line when he's brought down. Well, Logan leads the all-time series 15 to 13. So that makes this game number 29. You know, Logan dropped down to th uh, 3A mm -hmm. for a while. And, there, you know, there was a little bit of a tempest in a teapot about that, about you know, Mountain Crest wouldn't play him for a couple of years. And, uh, but they've split the last six, 3-3. Three, three. Always been a good rivalry. I don't remember many games where it's just been a flat blowout, at least in the recently. Big play for the Mustangs as Jackard picks up the biggest play of the night for Mountain Crest. He's up across the 40, excuse me, the 35, the 37 yard line. 23 yards. Great blocking up front by his offensive line. He's opened up a huge hole and he takes advantage of it. He's probably still running if not for that. Somebody was on their knees for Logan and just reached over and tripped him up. DeMooney is the fullback. And they give it to Jackard. Jackard through the middle. And he picks up nine yards. And that's the end of the first period. It's all Logan and Hiram. 35 to nothing.
35 to nothing Logan at the end of the first period. But Mountain Crest is starting to put something together on the legs of Josh Jackard. Jackard. Jackard has 29 yards on his last two carries. Actually, they, they spotted that one wrong. He picked up nine yards on first down. That should be up. Yeah. That should be up there. It should be second and one. Yeah, Jackard's it, second carry was yeah, pretty good as well. It's the chains that are in the wrong place, not the ball. And now they've moved them. See, the chain gang's over there on the Logan side. <laughs> Listening to the Logan guys. No, it's right here. I'm serious. Taylor's the fullback, and Jackard the tailback. In motion goes Mendenhall. They give it off to Jackard. He's trying to get that first down. He's close. Spotting about a yard short. That's well, he needed a yard. That means he got to the line of scrimmage. The end. So it's third and a yard. 0 for four on third downs for Mountain. Jackard hit a wall right there in the middle. Yeah. And he tried to spin off, and he did stretch forward beyond that point, but the official on the, on the sideline there, he came running right out and spotted it back down where his knee went down and because he kind of stretched out halfway laying on the ground anyway. Same play, and Elison fumbles the snap. Loss of a yard, and now it's fourth down. Never got the snap, did Elison, and so now it'll be fourth and two, and they'll have to punt. And remember, Jack with the punter is also the running back. See if they have any trickeration going on. Nope, they just kick it away. Compton calls for a fair catch at the 12-yard line. I'll bet he's wishing he hadn't called for a catch. Now there was nobody around him. It's about the deepest the Grizzlies have been in their own end, end of the field the whole game. Well, that is the furthest the Mustangs have matriculated the oh. entire first half. Nelson. Is Nelson back out as the quarterback? Yes, sir. Yep. I would imagine you'd probably play your starters through the first half if you if you're Logan. That was, uh, they, they ran that read option. And <laughs> we can watch that again. McIntyre's hitting the backfield. Nelson's, you know, hey, I think I'll make this block here. <laughs> he just kind of shoves a guy and tries yeah. to push him forward. <laughs> Let's take a look. Watch, watch Nelson after the handoff. It's a loss of two. Uh-oh, this is going nowhere. Uh, I'm going to give you the one arm, the one arm block. Not going to work. <laughs> Nelson's going to keep it. Nelson with a hole right up the gut. Nelson out near midfield, still going. He's at the 45-yard line of Mountain Crest. Boy, that hole in the middle of the defense was uh, big enough for a truck. 43 yards for Nelson, and he's over 100. 134. Wow. So at the 44 of Mountain Crest and already leading 35 nothing, Logan in business. We're gonna have to start. We're gonna have to start checking his his uniform for Teflon. Nelson underneath, ball's free. It was never caught. Receiver, I think it was comped and hit just as the ball gets there. That's yeah, it's, uh, it's a good defensive play and well-timed. You can see it right here in the replay. It just gets his hand up and under, and that not keeps the ball from making it all the way into the bread basket. Basket where you put bread. Rain still falling here in Hiram. 
And Logan has a second and 10. Nelson looking for Compton. Got it at the 10 to the end zone. Touchdown, Logan. 44 yards, Compton from Nelson. Wow, really impressed with Nelson and his uh, his ability to drop that ball right where it needs to go with pressure in the in his face. He's had two touchdowns to Compton with uh, a defender right in his grill when he's throwing that ball. Grizzly offense, high octane. And there he running on all cylinders here in Hiram. 42 to nothing, Logan. Jury duty. Mm. You're happy about that. It's right next to that little pub with those amazing cheeseburgers. Like these? Did you guys have jury duty? Wendy's. The new pretzel bacon cheeseburger, specially crafted by Wendy's. Oh, that's better. Well, here's the touchdown again. The rain's falling. But if you look long enough, a pigskin will fall out of the sky as well. <laughs> but that ball is right on the mark. It's wet, it's rainy, defender in the face, it's still a great pass. Isaac Swayze was just a step or two behind Compton. He, Swayze made a great play, the play before on Compton to knock the ball free on the reception attempt, but that time there was no chance. So Logan increases their lead. It's gonna be a running clock in the second half, Lee. Yeah, they don't start that to the second half, but uh, I'm thinking that even the Mountain Crest faithful wish they would start it in the first half at this <laughs> point in time. The route is on in Hiram. <laughs> Mountain Crest has been backed up deep in their own territory the entire game. Last time they were able to get it out near midfield before they bogged down. This time they started their own 20 out to the 23 yard line is Nick Taylor. Keegan Oldham, number 50, a uh, big lineman on the stop. I think you want him laying on you. Ever. <laughs> Taylor's the lone back again. They're going to pitch it out to Taylor. He's trying to get the edge. He's got a couple of blocks, and he's out to the 28-yard line. Boy, Jaden Connor has good position, but he's faced the wrong way when the running back comes around. He's cracked down on the end, and the running back is behind him. So now it's third down and two. Last time Mountain Crest had third and short, they fumbled the snap. Trying to go in a hurry. The ball's wet. It's started to rain. You can see it in your picture there. Colton Ferguson split wide along with another Mustang. In fact, three to the top of your screen. Jackard had trouble with it. Carries or uh, gathers it in and then carries it forward for five, six yards and a first down. I think that's their first first down of the game, isn't it? Second. Second. And Jackard's got both of them. He had got one on that 23-yard oh, yes. run. Patient running, waits for the hole to open up, and does a good job in picking that spot and getting first down. 56 total yards for Mountain Crest so far on the evening. 162, 164, 167. <laughs> one you want me to get my calculator 70, 172 for Logan. Well, he would... The only thing that stopped them from having more yards is that they've had a short field all night. Taylor's going to lose a yard, maybe two. Bracken Williams is the man that brings him down. It's a loss of two. Casey nope Coe one. there as well, number 70. Well, Logan fans tonight would be Skyview fans because Skyview's playing Box Elder mm -hmm. if, if 
Skyview beats Box Elder. Logan's sitting all alone on top of Region 5. Yeah, for the time being, Box Elder still undefeated in Region play. And we'll, we'll have the Logan Box Elder game for you, the last regular season game of the year. That's five yards. And that one probably be the, that one will probably be for the region crown. You would think. And the top seed coming out of region five. If, if Mountain Crest beats Ogden, then Mountain Crest would end up being in the playoffs. But they'd face East in the first round. Top four teams go from the region. And it's going to be third down. And a short six as Mountain Crest calls timeout. They want to they want to convert here and keep this one going with 6-11 to play in the half. That's a right there. That's those are camouflage colored Under Armour. Under Armour. You might be playing at Mountain Crest if. <laughs> you have camouflage you under are armor. Wearing your camouflage under armor. With a mullet. A mullet. <laughs> I'm allowed to say that. I know why you are. <laughs> it's a quote. <laughs> uh, there's a little bit of a joke going on before. <laughs> well, you know, it's coming from some of the Mountain Crest folks yeah. themselves, so it's okay, right? So it's all right. <laughs> and they were laughing. And it's true. They were laughing about <laughs> it. <laughs> It is an awesome look. Happy, happy, happy. <laughs> Bad snap they give to DeMooney and he loses yards. I mean, when you, when you have to pick the snap off the ground, plays are all about timing. It screws up the timing and DeMooney loses a yard. DeMooney, Another punt coming up. DeMooney, actually, he's a freshman, not a sophomore. Wow. I mean, good looking kid. Big kid. So Jackard, his own 25, high kick. Compton doesn't call for a fair catch this time. Picks up a block, picks up two blocks. Look out! And Compton tripped by the turf monster, and there's a flag back at the uh, 39. There's a block in the back. Number 10 of Mountain Crest gets pushed down from behind Mason Kendrick. Kendrick. Let's see who did it. Kendrick, somebody whose number we've called a lot in the game, Mountain Crest games we've done this season. He's a. This is a clean block here. He gets his helmet around in front of the shoulder pads. Yeah, that's close. It's, it's close, but it's, it's clean. But this next one you'll see, uh, watch number 10 of Mountain Crest right there. Gets pushed in the back. Still makes the tackle. Yeah, he got just enough of Compton. Probably doesn't make the tackle as he's not pushed in the back. It wasn't the turf monster. It was Kendrick. Got a piece of Compton's foot. So 15-yard penalty on Logan. That's their first of the ball game with 5.28 to play in the first half. They have played nearly a flawless half. So at the Mountain Crest 29-yard, excuse me, the Logan 29-yard line. Nelson looking down the sideline for his man. It's Chandler Lowry, and they're going to say that that's a catch. Twenty-four yards to Lowry. Boy, and Chase Nelson is looking that way the entire time. All he's got to do is get one foot down and hang on to that ball, and he does. 152 yards now on seven of 14 for Nelson on a couple of touchdowns, three touchdowns. He give to Compton on that little the touch pass fly sweep. Yeah, <laughs> barely even gets to Nelson's hands, and it's back out. Nothing for Compton. Well, they tried it twice, and it didn't work either time. First play of the game and there as well. Two yards on the first play of the game, zero there. That's an average of one. And Compton took a wallop. He may go back and film and say, I, no, how about not this one? <laughs> Have artists run that. <laughs> yeah. Now they fake it and pitch it back to is that McIntyre, and yes. he's hauled down near the 49-yard line. Caden Neiman taking him down, so that's a loss. Three. Still no quit in this defense, down 42 to zero. It's 
Third down. 12. Four or five wide receivers. Mountain Crest rushes three. Nelson looking up top. Freeman's wide open. Freeman had to wait for that one, and he's down to the 15-yard line. Well, he waited for a second, hoping the Mountain Crest defenders would run by him. That's got to be a blown coverage. You've got eight guys in coverage, and you leave him that open. I would concur. He wasn't just open. He was wide. <laughs> Mountain Crest, they it's jumped. like they jumped. Second time uh, Chase Nelson has got the defensive Mountain Crest to jump, pick up an easy five. Not a lot of laundry in this game. Logan with one penalty, Mountain Crest with three. So now it's first and five at the 10 yard line. Nelson goes to the end zone. And there's a flag there, and boy, that's interesting because that one, that one's knocked out of there, but it looked like he got there as the ball got there. I'd like to take another look at that one. He never turned and looked for it, but. He may have had a hand up in his face, and if he got his hand up in his helmet or anything, it may not be P.I., but let's look. You know that ball's coming, artist stops and goes up for it, and that's exactly what it is. Yeah. He's there early with the hand up in the face. He is there just a hair early. It's half the distance of the goal, so it's five yards. Compton with a one yard grab there. First, second and goal at the four. Nelson looking for his fourth touchdown pass to McIntyre who stretches into the end zone for a touchdown. Hundred and ninety two yards and four touchdown passes for Nelson. And McIntyre with his second catch of the game. He scored a rushing touchdown and now he's caught one. So he and Compton both with two touchdowns. Reyes' kick is up and it's good. 49 to nothing. Logan leads Mount Christian. 2.54 to play in the first half. Well, and that's the difference between between us and say a chain that sure. that they you know they'll hire anybody off the street doesn't matter sure. and not that that's so bad but here we're trying to give as as personalized service as you can as informed as you can possibly be and help the individual in their selection of eyewear. Yeah, that's a, that's a great benefit. I don't see how you can put a price tag on that. Uh, that's well, awesome. that's probably right. <laughs> you now four touchdown passes for. Nelson. And this one to McIntyre who stays in blocks for one count and slips out and just slips back, slips by Court Fuller who was there to make the tackle but not until McIntyre's into the end zone. This one out of the end zone, well a few yards deep into the end zone and Mountain Crest takes over at their own 20. They trail 49 to nothing. We knew this one would be a tough one for Mountain Crest, but this is uh, it's beyond more than, tough. Yeah, more than we even expected. He scored 53 last week in the entire game. Elison backs back there with him. He hands it off to Taylor, who gets back to the line of scrimmage. Pretty good first half for, there's your clock, 49 to nothing and the clock running. 
Pretty good first half for Nelson, 134 yards on eight carries on the ground, 192 yards and four touchdowns through the air, 10 of 17 passing. Would have had a rushing touchdown as well, but he came out of the game with a helmet issue. So he gave that to Kyler Freeman. Yeah, nice present. He was looking to throw, looks underneath, and he's wide of Jackard. He listens three of five for 16 yards. Jackard seven carries for 40 yards rushing. So now it's third down and nine. I guess Taylor ended up getting about a yard on that first carry where they ended up spotting it. Elison with five wide receivers. Four-man rush, and Elison has time. Unloads, finds Taylor, but he's only going to pick up a couple of yards. So it's fourth down and seven. Luke Smith's been quiet. Well, as, as good as the Logan offense has been, the, the Logan defense has been just as good, if not better, only giving up uh, a couple of big plays. So Jackard's kick, Compton at the 43. Dances around right back up the middle. He's to the 50-yard line. Jackard's kick Taylor, taken by Taylor Compton. And that's where Logan will take over. Still 125 to go in the half. That's plenty of time. Yeah, plenty of time for the Grizz if they want to put another one on the board. And it looks like the starting offense is trotting back out there. See if the starting offense plays in the second half or not. Mountcrest will get the ball to start the second half. And Logan... You know, they'd have a lot more yardage stats, but they've had a short field to work with. They're going deep. Down the field, and it just wow. about hauled in by, looks like, Artist. Artist. And a flag is out there at the 15-yard line. Are they going to call P.I. on that one? They may call it offensive pass interference, actually. The defensive back's looking back and saying, what do I need to do? Yeah, if anything, it was a push-off on Artist. Oh, that's a, that's a little bit of a tough one. And they're going to call it against Logan. That's what I thought. Right at the end of this play, you yeah. can see artists push off and get a little space. Second penalty on Logan. Pushes him right, right there. Yeah, right there, gives him a little shove, and the officials catch that, sets him back. That's no longer a loss of down penalty. But it's a loss of a lot of yardage. First and 25 after the 15-yard penalty. Nelson flushed out of the pocket. Stiff arms one man, throws it out of the bounds. The closest person there was Gage Ferguson, who's in his street clothes for Mountain Crest. Pressure on Nelson by Jordan Wendell. Nelson was under some duress that time. Mountain Crest hasn't sacked him. Let's take a look at Tyson Jensen for seven. Second and 25. Logan's not playing a conservative, are they? No. Now, these seniors from each team have been waiting for this game for a long time. Logan has their weapons to do what they've wanted to. Nelson's going to keep. He's hit, brought down at the 40. Gain of five. Nelson took the ball. Mountain Crest doing whatever they can to get a get a shot at Nelson and got to be thinking if you're a coach Rivero that uh, 45 seconds to go in the half that probably won't see Nelson in the second half. Kate Christiansen was, came out of there. He was in on that tackle. He's Kyle Christiansen's little brother. He's a sophomore, number nine. Looks like Kyle gets most of the dinner there. <laughs> Kate not nearly as big. Nelson flushed out of the pocket. Can run if he wants. Instead, he throws behind Freeman. So now it'll be fourth down, 20. Tough pass for the lefty, rolling out full speed to the right. 
second non-conversion of a third down for Logan, but they ended up converting on fourth down. And a penalty against Logan on that play is declined by Mountain Crest, so Logan looks like they're going to punt the ball away. Not something you see very often, first punt of the game for Logan. No, and the most bored player on the Logan sideline, the punter, Chad Lowry. Although we've seen him play a little bit wider. Yeah, he did catch a few balls. <laughs> Got one for 24 yards. High kick and fair catch called for, and Luke Smith at the 23 hauls it in. 12 seconds to play in the first half, and Mountain Crest trailing by seven touchdowns. See if they run a play or just sit the ball down. Well, with the huddle 15 yards away from the ball, I think it's going to be the take a knee formation. <laughs> it's, it's been a it's been a tough year for Mountain Crest, and it hasn't gotten any better tonight. Elison's going to hand off to the fullback. It's the hard way to take a knee. That's right. End of the first half. He had. Handed that one off to Jake Nelson, and Nelson, no gain, and that's the end of the first half. 49 to nothing. Logan all over Mountain Crest. a tough first half, uh, tough field position all, all day for your team. What'd you tell your kids at halftime? Uh, you know, if they have great character, they're going to come out and play hard. Um, I guess they're in a phase of their life where, as we talked about, you know, those who are here, if we, if we fight and battle through and show great character, that's what we're going to do. And, uh, you know, the only other option is to quit, and uh, I know I'm not going to do that. Fantastic, Coach. Good luck the second half. Back to you, Eric Olson. All right, thanks, Lee. The first half of the game of the week on the Valley Channel is brought to you by Icon Health and Fitness, changing lives with fitness innovation. Cash Valley Hospital, your choice in health care. The Salt Lake Express, door-to-door -door service to and from the Salt Lake Airport every hour. The Liston State Bank, strong and vibrant for over a century. Immaculate Homes, now your home. Wendy's of Cash Valley, it's way better than fast food, it's Wendy's. Discount Tire and Automotive, so much more than a tire store. Four Seasons Premier Apartment Homes. Live, work, play, and celebrate. VR Graphics for all your promotional graphics needs. Alpine Cleaning and Restoration Specialists. We respond, we restore, you relax. The Logo Shop, we logo stuff, all kinds of stuff. And the Valley Channel, Cash Valley's television station. 49 to nothing, Logan leading Mountain Crest at the half. Centennial. The only training bike that inclines and declines, rides anywhere in the world, and measures your energy output. With Google Street View and a 7-inch touchscreen, draw your map and ride every tour stage or anywhere in the world. The TDF responds to terrain changes with a full 20% incline, 20% decline. An integrated advanced power meter measures your exact watts. And silent magnetic resistance means the training bike making all the noise in the cycling world sounds like this. You can't train like this on any other bike. Call or go online today to get the Proform TDF Centennial with zero down plus free upgrade to rush shipping. 
49 to nothing. Just a route here in Hiram, and we're getting ready to start the second half. Mountain Crest will have the ball to start the second half for, for Logan. 144 yards on the ground, 192 in the air, 336 total yards. The Mustangs only 44 in the air, or on the ground, excuse me. 53 total, 35 on the ground, and 18 in the air for 53 total yards. And it's total domination by Logan. The offense scored every time, almost every time they touched the ball, and the defense scored once as well. So in fact, Logan scored on all but one possession in that first half. Six offensive touchdowns. You take a look out there at uh, Logan's defense and see it looks like they have a lot of their regulars in there as Levon joins me. Back in the booth, it's the kind of night where we're glad to be inside. It's not fit for man or beast, but Levon spent time out there, and the ball's on the on the turf. I think Mountcrest recovered that. It's the second time Elison's had trouble with the snap. Logan oh. football. Bracken Williams comes up with it. He's kind of Mr. Everything for the slogan defense. He's doing a lot. Two fumbles lost for Mountain Crest. And there's Chase Nelson on the offense back out here. <laughs> I don't think I would be doing that. Well, you can talk all you want about it. No, you don't want to get him hurt on some free play or anything, but. The lefty goes to work and he throws it out of the back of the end zone looking for McIntyre. But there's all sorts of philosophy you could speak about keeping your starters in and playing in the second half. A lot of times what you see is you'll see them the first possession of the second half and then they start pulling guys. But we'll see. They've got a short week. It's a UEA week next week as Nelson's on the run. Nelson looking for the end zone. Loses it out of bounds, but not until he's down at the four-yard line. Picks up 11. He's got 150 yards rushing. That's just a smart play on his part. He, nothing, he's looking to pass it at first. There's nothing there. Goes out of bounds after he's down. Nelson as the Grizzlies hurry it up, throws incomplete to McIntyre on that slant. They scored on that play in the first half, and that one was incomplete. Second and goal from the four. Logan, quickly. Nelson, gonna keep it. Tripped up and down he goes. Back to the original line of scrimmage as Jaden Thompson got a hold of him. That's the only carry of the night for Nelson that didn't go for positive yards, and it went for zero. <laughs> he hasn't lost yards at all this year. Started the night with a 61-yard scamper. Nelson in trouble. Down he goes. Oh, you almost called that too soon. Just about, and he got walloped. And he loses 10. Well, and this is what I'm talking about, keeping your starter in up by seven touchdowns. Dodge the bullet there. He gets up safe and sound in one piece. They're not going to kick field goal either. They're just going to go ahead and go for it. And fourth down and goal at the uh, 14. Nelson. Got a man, and he could lose it a little bit short. So it's incomplete, and the Mountain Crest defense holds. Logan can't take advantage of the Mustang turnover. Boy, and if Nelson can get it there, that's another touchdown easily. As the receiver turns back around, he turns back around a little too late, and that ball's just short. One hops into his hands. He's looking for Jensen. Nelson doesn't leave many short. He's got a he's got a good arm. He's a baseball player with the he's a pitcher. He can put some mustard on that football. 
That's the only the second time the Logan offense hasn't punched it in. A lot of new players for Mountain Crest is Court Fuller carries and Tanner Schwab's your quarterback. Court Fuller, the ball carrier, stopped by McKinney Larson. Get. Schwab's taking some snaps this year earlier when the uh, quarterback merry go round was going on here at Mountain Crest. He's just Indies. another one of those sophomores. Eight minutes to play in the third period. Schwab with the inside give. Fuller's going to bounce it outside. Steps in, steps out. He's across the 30 and out near the 35-yard line. They're going to mark him out of bounds at the 33. Fuller does a good job getting those pads low. He's got some uh, linebacker pads on. Makes him look a little, more, a little larger. 17 yards for Fuller and a first down for the Mustangs. Yep, linebacker pads and neck collar. And there you go. Logan replacing some guys on that defense as well. So both teams getting some guys some playing time. Fuller getting Fuller getting plenty of work here. And he's got eight more yards. 26 yards on three carries. So we're about down to the JVs here. Just a few other players sprinkled in. Well, as you can imagine, the uh, clock is ripping by at 6.50 to go in the third quarter. The amount of time that's gone off the game clock in this third quarter took us an hour in the first quarter. That's right. Second and two. Schwab's going to hand it off to Fuller again. He's got a first down as they move that pile. Nice push from the offensive line. Six yards for Fuller that time. Cash Valley Hospital, where your care is our number one priority. When you're at Cash Valley Hospital, you're always treated as a VIP. Very important person. Cash Valley Hospital, one of our game sponsors. And don't forget about the Salt Lake Express. Personal door-to-door -door pickup and drop-off service to and from the Salt Lake Airport every hour. Or you can get economic service from convenient Cash Valley locations. All from the Salt Lake Express. Let Schwab put it in the air. We're going to give the kids some time. Why not, right? Instead, they're going to hand it to Mooney. De Mooney is across midfield. They're going to mark him just inside Logan territory. Well, that's your trip on the We're under six minutes to play in the third. And all Logan, all game, scored on their first possession. Went 80 yards. The key play, a 61-yard run by Nelson. The 14-yard fumble recovery for a touchdown by Caden Anderson. Along with a sprinkled in with four Nelson touchdown passes. And they hand to Fuller again. Fuller. Across the 40-yard line, he's got the first down. The ball's free, but they're going to say he was down. And he picks up 10 more yards. Well, that's the, that's the play where they fumbled the ball earlier on in the game deep in their own territory, but it's executed much better that time. Fuller's got 42 yards on this possession. Mountain Crest had 53 total yards as a team in the first half. We're under five minutes to play in the third. Bob's going to give it to Fuller again, and this time Logan's loss. bringing a few guys. Two-yard loss. Sharp's handoff to Fuller. Mateo Foreman for the Grizzlies. So it's second and 12 now. And they haven't let Schwab put it up in the air yet. He had a, was it a broken foot? Yeah. Kept him out of action most of the season. about Box Elder's defense is Skyview's only scored 14 points so far in that game. Last I heard Box Elder only scored 10 though. That's right. True. And we knew Skyview's defense was pretty good. Jake Thompson ends up losing the yard. And a 
it's third and 13. Yeah, it was 14 to 10 last we'd heard out of Smithfield. And if we get an update before we're done, we'll let you know about that one. But Logan heading toward a, another win. Schwab's going to have to tuck it and run, and he's wrestled out of bounds. Picks up about five before he's taken down. That's a bootleg pass, but he's right-handed rolling out to his left. It's a tough pass anyway. Good coverage downfield and just has to take it upfield and try and get some positive yardage. Mountain Crest is down 49 to nothing. You might as well go for it. Might as well. Ain't no thing. <laughs> Schwab dumps it down underneath, and it looks like it's going to be short of the first down. Schwab uh, completes. Yeah, he completes the pass. It's about a seven-yard completion, but the problem was he needed about nine. That's a good effort, individual effort. It's another sophomore, Jaden Thompson, with the catch. Who's the quarterback, Lee? Well, that is a good question. I don't see number 19 out there. Sure don't. It's Freeman. Saw Freeman run the quarterback keeper in the first half and score a touchdown from about seven yards out. Logan. 7-0 coming into this one on their way to 8-0. Freeman bounces off a tackle. Gains about a yard. Freeman, a senior. Who's, their, uh, who's the next man up next year, I wonder? I don't know the answer. To that. I don't either. That's a really good question. Maybe they don't know yet. Kincaid Wildman's a, listed as a quarterback. He's a junior. Yeah. Garrett Wright, no. That's a CB, not a QB. It's late. Logan gets on a bus and heads to Hurricane next Wednesday. Wow. And they'll play at Hurricane. Hurricane, usually a pretty good team. This year, uh, not so much. They played down, clear down at Dixie. This one up in the air, just about intercepted, and then it falls harmlessly to the ground as Lavity couldn't come up with it. Steve Lavity has that in his hands, but he tips it up to Mountain Crest, almost has a turnover. And Logan ends the season at home against Box Elder. Again, that's a game we'll have for you. That could be the uh, region title right there if Box Elder can pull this game out against Skyview. Yeah, because this is the last region game for Logan before that. And of course, obviously not a hurricane. It's not a region game. No. Not last I looked. Here's the pitch. On third down, Jordan Hansen picks up about four. Let's bring up fourth down and about five, isn't it? Yeah. 20 seconds to play in the third period. See if Logan just lets the time run out on the third period of play. For Box Elder, they host Mountain Crest next week on Wednesday night before traveling to Logan. They trail Skyview in the second half of that one, and that's the end of the third period of play here in Hiram. 49 to nothing. Logan still on top of Mountain Crest. And that's the end of the quarter. ready to buy a new car, which is retired people we really couldn't afford. So he did the technical aspect of the engine light had been on uh, for the last year or so and, and he took care of that. 
And when that was done, then he started doing the mechanic part of it, the intuitive part. And I've had my mom come out. She's brought her, her car out and he's fixed her car. He actually redid her whole engine because her um, timing belt broke. So um, he fixed hers and it was reasonable and he's very nice. And if you have a question, you can call him and he'll you know give you advice on the phone. My slogan is honest service at a fair price. Logan getting set to punt it away as we start the fourth quarter. Boy, they went they went to 12 minutes and just started that clock before, <laughs> before the refs did anything with it. <laughs> that one off the side of the foot of the punter out to about the 40-yard line. Mountain Crest will take over at their own 40. For Skyview, like I say, they're leading Box Elder in the, in the second half, but it's a close ball game. And if they end them hanging on to beat Box Elder, then they're in pretty good shape. They go to Ogden next Wednesday. Who they should beat. And then they finish out the season with Roy at home. Who they also should beat, but that's a little tougher game than Ogden. Yeah, Roy has been pretty good this year, although they've lost two out of their last three. They beat off. Ogden last week, the Mooney, the hard run for five. That kid is a freshman. That kid's a ninth grader. Jeez. He's <laughs> big, isn't he? Good kid. He's one of those bus players. Looks great getting off the bus. You want him one of the, being one of the first kids off the bus. <laughs> and then tell everybody he's a freshman. <laughs> That's right. See that kid? Wait till you see our seniors. <laughs> Roy's five and two, and they're not they're not playing tonight. Still running. First down. Is that Thompson? Number 27. It was. Thompson. Well, let's talk about our Valley Channel player of the game for a second. I have an Angie's gifts gift card to clean the sink for the winner of that. He uh, does, does he? I do, and you know, because you're a defensive back from back in your day, you hate to give it to quarterbacks, but I think today it's quarterback. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say give it to that receiver that scored a couple of touchdowns. Five yards. We gave it to a receiver last time we were at Logan. Did we? Yep, it was artist. You gave it to artist, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, poor, poor Taylor Compton can't just can't get, can't get anything. <laughs> you are just. He, he got one last year. You're just me. <laughs> now you look at it. There's some guys from Logan that could uh, that could come up with it. Compton with a couple of three catches for 65 yards and two touchdowns. There's another pile moving run. Is that Thompson again? And he, whoever he it was, up comes up limping. Yeah, it's Thompson. It is Thompson. So. Do you ever clean that sink? Uh, I actually have not, but my children have multiple times. It's a huge, like, ice cream I've seen it. split. On third down and a yard for Mountain Crest. They're going to give it to Fuller. Short. And I, uh, I would love to do that, but my health coach says I cannot. You have a health coach. I, have you seen insurance oh lately? You have a health coach. Yes. So... Which also means you have probably a stylist no. and a manicurist. A gardener and a nutritionist. Such no. a metro. I have to have a health coach because of my job. Because, because of your I'm job. I'm too fat, they said. you got to have a coach. Well, with the way things are now, I think there's a first down for Mountain Crest as Schwab picks up a couple. I think the new uh, way they're putting together a new health plan that they just put you on an ice floe <laughs> and send you out into the ocean. <laughs> you say paddle your way you back. You are not, you can't contribute to society like that. <laughs> Eight minutes to play in the ball game. Mountain Crest in Logan territory. Fuller cuts it back in, still on his feet. Down to about the 33 yard line. Four yards. 44 yards and seven carries for Fuller. 
Lewiston State Bank. They're serving individuals and businesses for over 100 years in Cache Valley. They've got locations in North Logan, Lewiston, Preston. And check out their new location at 3rd South Main in Logan. Don't forget mortgages and home equity loans at Lewiston State Bank. Is that inside give to DeMooney? He's got some running room. DeMooney inside the 25 down to the 24-yard line. Pick up of 10. A really impressed with DeMooney, number 43. He's uh, He's got a great nose for the ball and, and where the holes line up and where blocking is. He's, he's not as fast as he will be when he gets a little older. That's one of the things that he'll work on all season is to build that lower body strength and be able to hit that hole even harder next year. There's one thing he'll work on when he's not 13 anymore. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. Oh, Fuller's, they were, they were bringing the heat, was Logan. And Fuller loses four yards. 13. That's ridiculous. Well, uh, he might be 14. Yeah, he could be. <laughs> Wendy's is the real choice in fast food. We deliver quality fresh food with real ingredients that provide the best taste in fast food at Wendy's of Cash Valley. It's too good to be called fast food, isn't it? It's, it's quick, good. but it's good. Thompson grabbed by the ankle at the 21 yard line, he goes down. It'll be third. After a six yard pickup, it'll be third and seven. Jayden Thompson, the ball carrier. I think Logan starters are on the sideline going, hey, we want that shut up. Don't, don't let them get in the end zone. Third and six. Give to Thompson right into the line. He picks up two, so it's going to be fourth down and five. Immaculate homes have distinctive and stylish exteriors with custom modern floor plans. They offer a three-year unmatched warranty on your home. And their goal is to have you happy in years to come, not just the day you move in at Immaculate Homes. Schwab on fourth and five. Might put the ball in the air. Four-man rush. Schwab's going to keep it. Schwab. Has the first down and more. He's inside the 10 yard line to the eight. 11 yards for Schwab. When you think he's gonna be dropped in the backfield, but there's good blocking that opens up a nice hole for him and then he does the rest on his own. 4.50 to play in the ball game. Logan has this one well in hand. Mountain Chris backups looking to get on the board. DeMooney puts his head down, gets to the three, five yards for DeMooney. Well, I'm going to head down to the field since there's a running clock. You have fun. Catch up with Chase Nelson. Tell me his line again. I may not remember all of it, but I'm going to hear it again. 10 of 21, 192 yards and four touchdowns, 140 yards rushing. The Mooney back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Seven carries, 22 yards for De Mooney, and it's third and goal from the three-yard line for the Mustangs with 3.55 to play in the ball game. Running clock makes that second half go by in a hurry. Pitch to DeMooney. DeMooney cuts it back in and gets to the end zone. Touchdown, Mountain Crest. Well, the freshman takes the pitch and finds the end zone. Lavani Damuni. And they're set for the PAT. Mountain Crest is short a player. Kicks up and the kick's good. 49 to 7. Mountain Crest gets on the board in high run.
Well, the freshman, DeMooney, takes the pitch from the sophomore, Schwab. Picks up a couple of blocks and then does the rest himself from three yards out. DeMooney with 25 yards and a touchdown on eight carries. PR Graphics, one of our sponsors. We create banners, signs, vehicle graphics, vehicle wraps, with graphics for your four-wheeler. They can do any size, color, design. They can customize or recreate to meet anyone's needs at PR Graphics. So Barr will address the pigskin at the 40, kicks it away. And this one's returnable from the five-yard line. Getting out about to the 15-yard line before he's snowed under is Garrett Wright. Nope, that wasn't Garrett Wright. That was Trent Archuleta. Trent Archuleta, the junior receiver. So three and a half minutes to play in the ball game. The Grizzly offense takes the field, leading 49 to seven. Freeman is your quarterback. Jordan Hansen, the running back. See if it's just Freeman right, Freeman left, or if they let him do anything else with it. In that three-man front for Mountain Crest. Three linebackers sneaking up in there. Freeman's going to keep it. Got an opening. Freeman out past the 35-yard line. Looks like he picks up about 23 yards. The ball carrier. Cameron Lindsay on the stop for the Mustangs. 27 yards on three carries for Freeman. We're at two and a half minutes to play. You can see Freeman picking his way through the defense here. Freeman scored a touchdown earlier when Nelson had to go off with an equipment problem. He ran one in. Freeman starts right, heads back to the left, and he's snowed under uh, with a two-yard loss. Tyler Freeman brought down behind the line. Under a minute now to play. Excuse me, under two minutes now to play in the high road, 49 to seven. Logan blowout, Logan moves to eight and zero on the season. They go to Hurricane next week, and then in two weeks, we'll have them right here on the Valley Channel against Box Elder at home. And that will be for the region title, the outright region title. Run up to the 45 yard line. Let's see who the ball carrier was. There, that was Hansen. Picked up about seven. Logan on third down and two. I think they're kind of looking up at the clock. They don't really have to run another play. They could, they can run this down as far as they can and then take a knee if they want, or they can just run, run a play here and then take a knee after the official. The back judge is counting down, so they're going to run it. Freeman's going to get the first down. Oh, Freeman's going to get into Mountain Crest territory, clear down to the 25-yard line. 30-yard run for Freeman on third down and two. Somebody's hurt for Mountain Crest. Tyler Freeman, the runner. He's not moving that leg, and oh, just the injuries have just piled up for the Mustangs this season, and that looks like it's not, no injury's a good one, but that one looks like a, a bad one. Can't see who it is, but he's in some pain. Can't.
Let's see what number it is. I don't know if it's six or eight for Mountain Crest. Is it eight? I think it was I think it was eight that ends up being hurt. Let's see if he gets up. Hang on, keep it running, guys. So it wasn't any of those guys in on the first one. I think it's that guy rolling down on the ground right there, and we couldn't quite see a number. And now they've got him up, and boy, it looked bad the way he was rolling around there. That was, looks like Micah Weaver, and he's walking on it right now. He's the senior running back and linebacker. So he came in, it was off screen, we got hurt. But he was laying there really not moving that leg and knee, and he's limping off very gingerly on it now. Twenty seconds to play in the ball game. Logan, see if they run a play or just take a knee. They're gonna go ahead and run a play. Freeman's gonna run a play. And he's gonna take a wallop. And that's gonna be the final play of the game. Logan comes into Hiram and defeats Mountain Crest. 49 to 7. Back with our player of the game after this timeout. Salt Lake Express and the airport shuttle have merged and become one. So we still have doorstep service and it's about the same price as it was before. Our focus now is to try to provide as many opportunities for people who, who need to have the ability to get to and from Salt Lake when they want. They don't want to wait at the airport for two hours. They also don't want to be driving around the valley when they get here. And you bring us to a location that leaves on time. We'll have another vehicle take you here to save time comfortably in, and that main vehicle goes 12 times a day on schedule both leaving the valley and coming back. Chase Nelson down here. Chase, uh, great, great game. Thank you. That was awesome. So you're the Valley Channel Player of the Game. Congratulations, first of all. Thank you very much. It's an honor. Now, we uh, we were debating up there whether or not to give it to one of your receivers or to you. Talk to me about your receiving core. Um, they're studs. My brother said he kind of likes to compare mine and DJ's and his teams, and he said we got the best of uh, the three, and I agree with it, man. They go make plays for me countless times. We knew they were going to come out and man, and we said, great, let's go at them. We got athletes on them, so it Fantastic. You were throwing the ball really well. A lot of pressure in your face, though, in a couple of those passes as well. Talk to me about the physicality of this game. Yeah, we knew they were going to put some pressure on and try and slow our pass game down like that. We saw that on film, and uh, our O-line was great with protections all night long. They were getting our calls in and executing those, and so uh, I really didn't feel very much pressure. I threw on, I tried my best to get it out on time and just let my receivers do the work. Fantastic. You get a coupon to clean the sink in Angie's. It's a little wet. You might want to share that with Taylor Comp. Oh, I will for sure. All right, congratulations. Back to you, Eric Olson. All right, thanks, Lee. Thanks for watching the Game of the Week on the Valley Channel. It's brought to you by Icon Health and Fitness, changing lives with fitness innovation. Cash Valley Hospital, your choice in healthcare. Salt Lake Express, door-to-door -door service to and from the Salt Lake Airport every hour. Lewiston State Bank, strong and vibrant for over a century. Immaculate Homes, now your home. 
Wendy's of Cache Valley. It's way better than fast food. It's Wendy's. Discount Tire and Automotive, so much more than a tire store. Four Seasons Premier Apartment Homes. Live, work, play, and celebrate. VR Graphics for all your promotional graphics needs. Alpine Cleaning and Restoration Specialists. We respond, we restore, we relax. The Logo Shop. We logo stuff. All kinds of stuff. And the Valley Channel, Cash Valley's television station. We leave on the guys in the truck behind the cameras doing the hard work. I'm Eric Wilson saying we'll see you next time on the Valley Channel.